I'm so glad you can be here. This is part 3 of the monster videos, but it can be watched entirely by itself. You don't need a watch, it's only audio based, for now, and you can do whatever you like. Besides, just let this run in the background. So, let's begin. Arise, warriors. A long ride was ahead of them. In the next eight hours, they were due to climb just under five and a half thousand feet. And so, at the crack of the autumn sun, the troop arose. Breakfast was cold, and on the road, water provided by the many thin, snaking streams down the mountainsides. Marching in a loose line, the troop was alert. They heard the crack of rocks bouncing off each other in the distance. Lyania, the scout, arrived at the Plaque Fissure. This was their way up. Two sheer stone walls with dozens, if not hundreds, of thin ashwood ladders, steps and bridges cutting from side to side across the gorge. They started their ascent. Welcome to the third video. This is a continuation of one of the previous ones. For context, that one should probably be viewed first. It is not entirely necessary. So, with the formalities aside, this fissure is the stage in which our encounter shall be played. The fight is against the Masters of Plaque. This plant is a small weed that grows climbing up the sides of cliffs. The plant can be brewed into a simple jumping potion. The masters of this place have the upper hand. They have mobility, but the troops don't. This is a great method for creating powerful circumstances, great encounters, due to imbalances, new rhythms, and this should be a great encounter. The upper hand or the higher ground principle is very powerful. This means it makes almost all fights e not easier, but a lot more dramatic, epic even. But it can also mean, well, the party is slightly more likely to, let's say, expire. Well, here's a tangent tip. Magic works for the enemies too, so do potions and items. Let the enemy use these magic items as well. Why can't a goblin have a staff of magic missiles, or something along those lines? They are intelligent creatures, and I would say as long as they have an intelligence comparable to an adventurer, they should be allowed to use magic, or at least use things they find. And this makes the items, once gained, even more epic. The Nine Live Stealer Great Axe, won in a duel against the Tyrant Fire Giant King, is much more interesting than finding it in a chest at the back of some dusty old room. The broom of flying, torn from below a night hag before she fell to her death, that is truly epic, and the adventurers will feel as if they are entirely equipped by their past experiences, which they should feel, because, well, they should be. Anyway, back to some more pros. They clambered out of the narrow fissure, and rolled onto their backs, letting the blood drip from their blades and breastplates. They had lost half an hour. Sir Davin had been pushed off of one of the bridges. They camped and then moved, under the moon, the hot easterly wind from behind keeping them warm. They walked for three days more, until they entered the pass. This narrow strip of snow-covered slate was the only way to get through the mountains, other than the Shadow Gate Caves. No one passed through those. Second last encounter, 
And this is the so-called boss battle. Uh, side sliver here. Make this harder than deadly. They, the troop, are more powerful than ever. They've had a rest. But don't just put on one big bad. They just get flanked in all directions, and even if you're not using the advantage flank rules, the creature will just dissolve. So give it minions. Give it very low CR creatures, and reduce their hit points to become effectively one-hit kills. Uh, this buffs the fight by adding many directions of attack, and then compensate a little in the CR of the big bad, but other than that, it's not that different. So, the Grand Chief King of the Silver Vale trade route sits on his throne in the middle of the trade road. Let the troop play this one out, talk even. Then the king waves his hand halfway through, uh, maybe even in the middle of a sentence, and everyone has to roll initiative. This uses... this one's big point is, use the terrain. Set up boulders behind which the minions can hide holes in which the minions run out. These could be replacement troops to maintain the numbers. Nets are hidden under the snow, which when pulled move all creatures above it. Or maybe they just cause difficult terrain. Your decision. Hide knives that deal damage whenever walked over. Wind blows over the left side of the battlefield on the third round that obscures the area with lifted snow. Large snowy boulders roll down the sides that must be dodged. You can make these boulders very dangerous, but warn the players about them. Uh, a small hint here or there, a rumble, a crack, and then a ball of death. Let the players push minions or even the king under the boulder just before it, and let the damage be dealt to them instead of the players. This will make them feel like epic tactical heroes. There is just so much you can do, but don't do it all. Let the players breathe. Don't force feed them chaos, unless you're in the plane of limbo. Then go full on. They had killed him. They had driven one of his own daggers into his neck. Now his bones are the way markers of the pass. The troop continued, slowly, battered from the fight before. An hour they shuffled on. Then they rested, again for one hour. When they got up to walk, they heard it. The rumble. This rumbling is the snow they rested on, shifting down the mountain slopes. They are in an, on an avalanche snow sheet. This is the final point. On occasion, especially at the end of an arc, players want an epic conclusion to tie all the missing threads back together. Have them whistle along down the ice sheet, remnants of the bandit camp skiing alongside. This this is already great, but greater would be that there is one reckless raging warrior, maybe a barbarian, which screams in fury, his eyes wet with tears, with only one gloved hand, which will remind the players of the glove they found previously. Each attack he shouts the names of men that the troops had killed, ending with my father, or something just as dramatic. So remember, sometimes just mixing things up, and stack odds against them, or against your players. Always use suitable tactics, and once in a while, tie up threads in inside the encounter itself. They don't always have to be done in role-playing sections, or in exploration. Now that will stick in the players' minds forever. 
I hope this rambling has led you to a fountain of inspiration, or at least a diluted thimble full of it. Either way, I thank you and wish you well, creators of chaos. Quick unscripted end note here, thank you for watching the video, I like this very much and I would love to continue doing this. If you want me to do anything of your choice, type it out in the comments, I will read every single one and reply to every single one that you put there. Any feedback is always helpful. Also the next videos will be unscripted ramblings about the world that I have created for my players. And it should be fun, you will see a little bit of my world building techniques there, and I'll see you in the next one.